book fans. Um, today I'm talking to you about four uh, recent YA books I've read. The title is a little bit of a lie because three of them are dystopian and one isn't. Um, but I just thought it would sound better if I just said four dystopian books. Um, I've been reading a lot of new books really quickly lately and I read these four in the space of a few days and I kind of feel like I should slow down a bit to appreciate the books because the minute I finish one I'm straight into the next. Um, but anyway, this is all spoiler free review, okay? I was going to do the spoiler review in this video too, but I could talk for Ireland about a book so it would be way too long. So I'm putting this as the spoiler free review video and I'll do a spoiler review then as well that would be in a different um, link and they're all YA so they're all young adult books and um, three of them as I said are just open. so the first one A Million Sons by Beth Revis it's the second book in a new series by Beth Revis the first one was called Across the Universe and um, I discussed that a bit in my dystopian um, videos if you want to go and look for that um but this is basically about like a lot of the dystopian novels now these days are set up in space on a spaceship you know people are on there and they're heading for some you know planet that isn't earth um and this one is from two people's point of view so the main girl which is amy and the main boy which is elder and book one was a nice dystopian ya um emphasis on the word ya but this the book two was on a completely different level. This was just um, much more complex, both ca like character-wise, plot-wise, theme-wise. Um, it could be read not just by like young adults, but like adults as well. Um, it was just like it was a lot darker because humanity in this book has just gone like chaotic and, and evil almost, and you know, like human nature is down to its um, kind of lowest in a way, like you know what you revert to in, in times of panic. But um, so there's lots of hard decisions in this book, and um, the plot just kept going and going, and you you didn't know where you know it was finally going to climax, and then um, it comes to kind of an unexpected ending. I didn't expect that to happen, and um, like after I finished the first book, I was like, yeah, how about I read the second book? But after finishing the second book. I'm really excited for the third one and the third one is called Shades of Earth and it's out in January 2013 so it's a year long wait for that but I say it'll be really exciting and it's going to be completely different from the first two books so I really enjoyed um, A Million Sons and I definitely give it a thumbs up um, if you like the first one you're going to love this one even better so it was really good the second book I want to discuss is The Pledge by Kimberly Dirting This is a dystopian book, but it doesn't really feel, it has that dystopian feel as much. So this book was about a girl called Charlie. She lives in a world where um, society is broken down into class. I know a lot, every society kind of has you know, different classes, middle class, working class, but it's so strict here and it's mostly segregated by language. So you are not allowed to look at someone speaking a language above your class above your class so if um, Charlie hears someone speaking a language that the higher up class speaks she can't have eye contact with that person if she does she could be executed she could be killed it's a severe crime but the thing with Charlie is that she has this power that she can understand any language like even if she never heard the language in her life she'll understand it when she hears it so it's kind of dangerous to her because she can, you know, easily forget to not look at the person, or yeah, easily forget to not look at the person. But um, so that's kind of like with Charlie. But, but she kind of gets involved. She gets involved in this world of like um, royalty and secrets and bloodlines, and she lives in a um, she lives in a part of the country that's run by a queen, and. There's some people against the Queen and there's some people for the Queen and she kind of gets caught up in that. So I was unsure of what the story was before I read it because it's so easy when you have an e-book to 
to not know what the back of the book says because you know you don't actually have a back of a book so I had it in my e-reader for a while and I actually forgot what it was about so it was kind of nice to read it not knowing you know what was going to happen but I have to say it took ages for the proper plot to form the first half of the book the author spent way too long setting up the, you know, the setting and the characters it took half a book for the story to begin and that's kind of one of the negatives with it because I wasn't really, you know, feeling much for the book in the first half. By the second half, I thought I got really good. And I, the thing I love about this book is that it has, like, really great intrigue and mystery to it. You know, it's not predictable. And I liked that. Um, the negatives, it was a bit overly romantic and mushy. And the descriptions were even worse. Um, Charlie was just kind of way too emotional. Like the descriptions every time she saw this certain character like her heart would stop and but I'm, I'm understating that like it would go on for paragraphs about how she's feeling and how she can't breathe and her heart and all, all her emotions so yeah I thought she was again the descriptions are a bit OTT sometimes and Chai the character herself more so in the beginning I thought she was very passive um, but the positives as I said, the final half or third of the book got really good. I was, you know, really enjoying it. I love the society created in this world, actually. Um, you know, cause the whole separation of class and language. I've never um, read that before. I'm not sure when the second book is coming out. I looked it up and I couldn't find any information on it, but I assume there will be a second one. I do think it's different to the typical dystopian ways. So for that reason, I would recommend it to people who are loving dystopian novels at the moment and who want something a bit different. I do think it is that. Um, but I'm going to warn you, the first half, it takes a while really to get into the book. The third book I'm talking about today is um, Glow by Amy Kathleen Ryan. And this is the first book in a new sy dystopian series called Sky Chasers. And one is called Spark and it's out around July 2012 so July this year um, so again this is another book I had for a while on my e-reader and I forgot I didn't really know what it was about all I know it was dystopian and that was about it so again this is another one on a spaceship and um, but it's completely different to across the universe in what happens in the plot so um, I do think this is definitely for an older kind of YA, like at least 16 and up, um, because it deals with some serious kind of topics and um, really kind of harsh emotions. It put me, like, I hope the second book has a bit more happiness in it, because this one put me through the ringer. I felt such strong emotions while reading it, like anger and shock and outrage at certain characters. And there's lots of death and devastation in it. Um, but I don't really want to give too much of the plot away because I really enjoyed finding out what was what was happening in it. Um, there's kind of two main characters, a main girl and a main boy. And there's kind of two real situations happening in the book and we get to see what's going on in each one from their point of view. So we have Waverly, the girl, and we have Karen, the boy, and they're both dealing with different things. Um, it's about basically these two guys, these two people are on a spaceship and it's called Empyrean, I think, I can't really pronounce it, and <laughs> then they're kind of, um, sister ship, the New Horizon, um, they start seeing that and that should be way ahead of them, so they're like, why is this other spaceship coming towards them? And they're wondering what the other people in that spaceship want and then all kind of like, all chaos breaks out and we find out what they really want so I won't really I don't want to tell you that because I do think you'll enjoy it more if you don't know what they want um but I, I really enjoyed it I have read a few reviews and people haven't really loved it they thought it was okay but I have to say I really enjoyed it I thought it was really good but I am looking forward to the next one and um you know I hope it'll be you know just as good as this one maybe even better Okay, so the final book I'm discussing today is called Rage by Jackie Morse Kessler. And it's not a YA book, or sorry, it's not a dystopian book, but it is YA. 
This is the second book in a series called The Writers of the Apocalypse series. This is the second one. I didn't read the first one. Um, the first one's called Hunger. And um, the third one, which is coming out um, in March, is called Lots. <coughs> Each book is from a different person's point of view. Usually I don't read series that do that. I hate that really because I prefer getting into one character. Um, but I really wanted to read the second book, so I downloaded this one, Rage. It's about a girl um, called Missy and she has a lot of really issues. Um, but she self-harms, so she's a cutter. And um, you know she cuts her arms, she cuts her legs, her stomach. Like, I really appreciate that the author didn't, like, shy away from the harsh, you know, realities of cutting. And, um, but the whole supernatural paranormal element to it is that one of the horsemen of the apocalypse, Death, he approaches her and he, um, offers her to be the new, um, horseman war. So she decides, well, she kind of, she kind of, um, accepts the role, not really knowing what it means, and she's the new, um, horseman war. So um, she gets her horse and she gets her sword, but um, she still has all her kind of human problems to deal with. I loved the human element of this book, the kind of emotional issues of it. And I could have done without the whole supernatural horse and the apocalypse, apocalypse thing. I wish that was actually just cut out. Um, I found myself skipping a lot of the pages that, you know, she was on her horse and doing war things. A lot of it was kind of internal conflicts. Like she was talking to war in her head and I didn't really understand, I just thought the whole uh, Heart of the Apocalypse thing was a bit messy and um, I just couldn't understand Missy's role in it, how was she going to be war, I didn't really get it to be honest. And there was kind of odd touches in point of view as well, like we had Missy for the majority but then the odd time we'd have Death doing um, a scene or we'd have um, Batman doing a scene, um, I just should have stuck with Missy. I felt so bad for Missy in this book, um, with the amount of bullying going on. Like, seriously, for people watching who go to high school in America, is it as bad as it is in books and movies and TV shows? From reading this book, I would be, oh my god, terrified to go to school in America because it seems like hell so awful like the worst bullying I've seen in schools here in Ireland is a bit of bitching behind someone's back I don't even think we get much name calling to someone's face but what ha what happens to Missy is just oh my god I taught my sister and she 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 even had a big strong uh, reaction to it it's crazy So for people um, who go to school in America, let me know, is it really that bad? This book, I did like it. I, as I said, I liked all the human sides with that, but I didn't like the supernatural part. Um, if, you're, if you want to read about you know, the issues with bullying and cutting and, and all, that, all that element to it, I do suggest you read it. It has quite an abrupt ending, which I didn't like, but... Um, yeah, I liked it anyway. It's getting really dark. I had to switch places. It was getting too dark over there. Um, yes, the sun is setting. But uh, so that was my spoiler free review on those four YA books that I recently read. I would kind of recommend them all. But um, my favourite would probably be um, Glow, then A Million Suns, then. Rage and the Pledge are kind of on the same level, but um, yeah, so check them out if you think they sound good, and uh, I'll probably do the spoiler review either tomorrow when there's more sunlight, or maybe tonight with the lamp on, anyway, thank you very much for watching today.